So, this is Mr. Red Fox. Um, this is part of a new video series I'm doing where I will be talking about my ideal Fallout game. Um, now, uh, the reason I'm talking about this is because with the news that Bethesda has been bought by Microsoft, and Exile Studios has been bought by Microsoft, Obsidian has been bought by Microsoft, basically the original people who made the good Fallout games are all under one uh, aegis. So with that being said, that means that the original people who made the good Fallout games can come together and make a good Fallout game. Now, I'm leaving Bethesda out of this because Fallout 3 and Fallout 4 and Fallout 76 are trash. And uh, <laughs> I stand by that statement. So, um, this is part one of a multi-part video series. Um, in this part, I will talk about what I would consider the setting, um, how I would basically build the world, the characters I would have, etc., etc. But and uh, <clears throat> in this part, I'm only going to be talking about uh, the general setting and what the gameplay hook would be for the overall game. Um, part two, I'll discuss uh, more in-depth gameplay mechanics, that type of thing. So that being said, let's get into it after the cut. So. The central conceit of an RPG is the setup, the, the central hook that's going to hold everything together. So, uh, you know, for example, you know, Chrono Trigger, the central conceit in Chrono Trigger is that um, your characters can basically jump around in time, manipulating events in order to change the outcome. Uh, case in point, um, you can essentially uh, go back, there's a certain point in the game where you can go back in time and essentially prevent um, Luca's mother from losing the use of her legs. Um, or you can go back in time and leave Robo at a certain, in the Middle Ages, and he'll basically reforest this this uh, this uh, area that was dying due to uh, some type of negative event um, and that's the central conceit of that game that's the central gameplay setup hook um, you know the central gameplay setup hook for Fallout 4 was uh, the settlement system which is kind of a stupid central gameplay loop for uh, RPG <laughs> it's like hey you can build houses Really? That's that's where you're going with it? Okay, alright. Um, I, I never was really into that. I never thought that was a cool thing. But that's neither here nor there. Um, so, um, a good example of a central conceit done well is if you're playing a game like Planescape Torment, where, typically speaking, you want to avoid dying in most RPGs. But in Planescape Torment... The whole point of your character is that he wants to find a way to permanently die and stop being reborn, the immortal. So, it's a lot of interesting things going on. So, basically, the central conceit of this game, um, of my ideal Fallout game, would be essentially uh, one where we, you know, we go beyond what we typically see in the Bethesda Fallout games, which is a lot of technology, like, Bethesda seems to think that Fallout is all about being a parody of um, 1950s uh, anti-communist McCarthyism America, except with, like, kind of, like, uh, pseudo-technopunk uh, aesthetics, which kind of doesn't work for me. So, before we go any further, I'll uh, get to what I mean by that um, in a bit. So, the central theme behind this, uh, behind my ideal Fallout game would be kind of like looking at the opposite end of um, the spectrum. Which, because the main conceit of Fallout is that the events of ultra-capitalism, anti-communism, ultra-jingoism, ultra ca uh uh, ultra nationalism basically leads to the events of fallout like these different nations bomb the shit out of each other 
and it should be the end of all things, and yet life goes on, except it's all fucked up due to radiation and, you know, uh, the breakdown of society, and how society tries to claw its way back. Now, uh, Fallout's 1 and 2 and New Vegas tried to show that society is will indeed try to claw itself back. Fallout 3, Fallout 4, Fallout New Vegas, I mean, Fallout 76, show that that is, uh, you know, that Bethesda doesn't get it. They just keep on doing a parody of 1950s um, anti-communism, McCarthyism, uh, you know, except techno-punk uh, future, which doesn't really work in my opinion. So... With that being said, um, that leads to um, my idea for what would be the future of uh, where to go. So you would be looking at the opposite end of that spectrum. A group of people who wanted to use science for the good of mankind and the world and not for the other end of the spectrum. So, um, the beginning of the game would start, you would have some exposition in the beginning of the game talking about 15 years before the Great War, you have, um, essentially speaking, you have a, a, a war of, uh, you, you have a group of scientists who were actually kind of like the brain trust of, um, how can I put this? They, they were they were actually some of the more inventive people at vault Tech who come to the realization that vault Tech is like, basically they're, exper they're, they're, they're planning on doing experiments on people without their consent, um, without their knowledge, just really inhumane things. And they're like, eh, we can't be involved with this. So they sign an NDA um, the, 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 the head scientist of this team of like ultra intelligent, talented people at Voltec says, you know what, I can't be a part of this, fuck you guys, uh, we're going to go create our own company. So within a year, the guy, along with some venture capitalists, uh, built, makes his own company. Um, now, it doesn't have to be called this, but this is just my idea, called Arc Industries. Um, And, you know, his idea is to basically use tech, building a better future uh, uh, for tomorrow. That, that's the big that's the big thing for uh, for, for, for uh, this guy, the scientist and his team. So what he doesn't know is that one of the people on his team is a mole for vault tech. Uh, they're going to try and steal his technology. Um, they're not going to kill him. They're just going to try and steal his technology because, I mean... Technologically speaking, this guy's technology is... His ideas are far more advanced than what Vault Tech has. Like, he actually wants to use transistors and not tubes. So, you can actually get access to, uh, you know, smaller computers. Um, stuff like that. Um, better technology. So, the first thing he does is he creates a central processing uh, supercomputer... That's basically the, the the nerve center of his of his corporate of his of his uh, of his scientific labs. Um, and he 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 uh, he drops some uh, devices for the ultra wealthy um, to help them out. Uh, initially, it, he, he develops a system to clone uh, organs so that these people can stay alive longer. You know why why wait for an organ donate an organ donor? When you can literally just, um, where you can literally just give a, uh, a better, you can grow one without the defects on the, on the DNA level and have it implanted. Um, that type of thing. And that's how he stays afloat for a while. But basically, he builds this supercomputer that comes to the realization uh, that after spending a year doing, you know, mega calculations, comes to the realization that within like 13 years there's going to be a a, a a nuclear war of epic proportions and we're all gonna die like everything is gonna die uh, <laughs> like the world is fucked and he comes to the realization that you know I gotta I gotta do something I can't just I can't just you know um, 
let the, let the world end like this. So he, he basically comes to the realization that I, you know, me and my team, we can use our technology to build a better world. However, we're not going to be able to do it now because we're just going to run out of time. So they, each of them develops their own way to prolong their lives. One of the scientists uh, starts creating clones of himself. But unlike those imperfect clones, like the vault of that guy in Fallout 3, that just uh, all the clones just basically, like each clone is degenerated, this is cloning perfected. Um, so basically, uh, the guy creates a clone that starts out as a baby. The baby grows to a certain age. He teaches everything. The previous clone teaches everything it can to the to the to the to the to the to the, to the new clone, and then they pass on their tasks to the next clone. Um, another person basically slows down their aging to where they're basically a a, a, a perfect ghoul. So using radiation they've halted their aging process or at least slowed it down to where it's practically halted so 200 years past and this person only looks like they've aged like five or six years um another person has turned themselves into a, a android um so a synth before synths except uh you know they know what they are and you know um you know making a series of better bodies all the time that type of thing so Essentially speaking, your character, uh, not your character, these, these, these scientists essentially use their technology to, to, to make themselves, um, to prolong their lives so that they can be ready to come out of the ashes of this, of this uh, fallout and help rebuild the world. Unfortunately for them, one of the people is a mole and uh, sabotages their efforts, but they don't know about this as of yet. Um, finally, the head scientist, the guy who who created the computer and basically has this vision for building a better world, a better future, uh, to restore humanity and, and the world itself after a nuclear fallout, basically comes to the realization that like he doesn't have a way that he can basically stay alive long enough to, to see this through, except by digitizing himself and uploading his brain into a supercomputer. So that's how he's going to stay alive. Uh, not that bullshit they did in, uh, you know, with the retcon robo brains and that type of thing. Like literally, he's digitized his consciousness and uploaded it into a uh, into his supercomputer. Um, and that's what he's going to use to help save the world, allegedly. So essentially, this this character. Um, uh, like the last five years before the the, the the Great War happens, he essentially has a series of, of arcs built. Um, only he has five slated. Only three get get completed. The first one is the one that he and his team are on, um, and it has a DNA bank that basically has untainted DNA that they can use to reconstitute living creatures. Um, you know, cattle, horses. Um, Humans are too complex, so not humans, but they do have the technology to uh, prevent someone from being, uh, to reverse the effects of uh, nuclear radiation. Uh, they haven't tested it, because it hasn't happened yet, but they, they could do it. Um, you know, DNA samples and seed samples from various uh, uh, plants and animals and shit. And they also, uh, most importantly, have access to technology to create a, uh, a field which can actually neutralize and reverse the effects of long-term radiation exposure in an area. And all of this is coordinated with the supercomputer that this uh, scientist created that he's uploaded his consciousness into. And then the events of the game happen, and your character, and uh, not your character, but uh, these scientists are basically like shit. Um, they batten down the hatches. Uh, the three, the three arcs that are actually that were actually completed, um, <clears throat> um, are activated. And unfortunately, uh, you know, even though the science, the scientists and his team gave certain. Uh, you know, gave warnings to people. No one believed that this shit would happen. No one listened to the guy. So, like, it's just the scientist and his team, okay? And no, no one else was help. No one to help them. And that's where the games really uh, begins. 
Um, for some odd reason, you know, a hundred and a hundred years into their their in self-enforced lockdown, while they're working on their experiments, they suffer a mass power outage. And when everything comes back on, the auxiliary power comes back on, they make a startling realization. Um, the the uh, one of the central MacGuffin, the central MacGuffin, which I don't know what to call it, but the central MacGuffin that basically would enable them to start re enacting their plan to basically. Uh, restart humanity has been stolen and one of their compatriots turns out was a mole from vault tech now vault tech doesn't exist anymore but this guy or girl or whatever um has their own plan about how they're going to create their own uh their own uh vision of the future and all that type of shit and that's where uh that's where your character comes in because you know approximately about you know uh 10, 15 years into the events, uh, after the events of Fallout uh, 4, you know, around the, the original Fallout games, Fallout 1, Fallout 2, um, you go know, to the NCR and all that shit, basically, uh, they're, uh, they've gotten some of their power back, uh, their, their main power back on, but they're pretty much... They can only do, like, some of their lower-tier experiments and use some of their lower-tier shit right now. They come to the realization that, uh... That, uh, someone has breached their perimeter. And that's where your character comes in. Now, this is where the central conceit of the game changes. Because this game, uh... Unlike typical Fallout games where you can just play as a human being and that's it, this game you can play as one of... Uh, you have multiple races you can choose. You can choose to be human. You can choose to be uh, subsets of humans. So you can be a vault dweller. You can be a scavenger. You can be uh, one of the myriad of myriads of gangs that run the wasteland. You can be all that shit. The choice is yours. Um, <clears throat> etc. 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 Um, I'll get to part two where I will con continue with. Uh, what you can be and how your character creation goes on with the next video. Um, so stay tuned. Um, part two coming up next.